water supply to the entire rig comes from the pump that's inside this cup here, normally sitting at the bottom of the tank. The cup holds a submersible pump, just a small, uh, small little fountain pump. The pump is ensconced in sponge and some filter floss material to keep gunk from entering the pump and having it shut off. There's plenty of opportunity for water to get to the pump, however, but first it has to flow through all that gravel. The great thing about um, using gravel as the initial line of defense against pump gunk is you can vacuum that gravel up very easily. I use a um, one of these little battery operated uh, pumps through a, uh, a piece of filter sock and I suck the uh, suck the gunk out of the gravel with this. Right. It's a lot easier than actually removing the, the pump, cleaning out the sponge, uh, reinserting it all. Uh, you might want to do that periodically, like uh, I, mean, I said, but uh, at this point, with about two inches of uh, gravel on top, you can just uh, you can just shut off the pump for a moment. You want to shut it off while you while you're vacuuming. You switch off the, off the power to the pump, and then vacuum off the uh, the on the top. Let's put this thing in the tank. And here's the here's the water line. Meanwhile, back over at the business end of the device, water highly saturated with carbon dioxide leaves the bottom of the fuser assembly, goes through this sort of jerry-rigged uh, 90 degree turn, another 90 degree turn, rises up here and rises above the level of the tank, and then it's free, once it crests the top of this U-bend, to spill into this, spill into that chamber. And all that chamber does is it holds a heater. The heater's down in there, nicely immersed in water. The pressure of water in the column here is what drives flow, because we're no longer under pressure, we're exposed to air. We're open at the top. The height of this column of water above the surrounding tank water drives the flow down into this repurposed under gravel filter assembly down through this uh, sort of Jerry rigged hose fitting. Into the under gravel filter assembly. And allows it to percolate up through the gravel. Until you determine the resistance of flow in your tank of the water coming down that column and out this grill, this repurposing gravel filter. Until you determine the resistance to that, you will not know how high above the tank level that column has to be to, keep, to continue to drive flow past the heater. You don't, want, you don't want the water to overflow the top of the tube. If it does, that's okay. It's in the tank. That's why I, I do all my uh, connections and whatnot inside inside the tank. We're spilling water isn't going to isn't going to matter, and it's all all the, the things that happen are going to end up in the tank anyway with the fish and the plants. But you want this to be high enough, and you may have to start with a taller tube, and then you'll find out that the pump and water flow don't necessitate a tube nearly as high as you thought, and then you can cut the tube down a bit, at which point you can also lower the altitude of this U-bend 
to get that all more compact closer to the surface of the water. But until you figure out the flow, start with a much taller, much taller uh, reservoir for the uh, water heater, and that will of course necessitate a a, a greater height to the uh, to the spillway there, to the uh, the U bend that's built into it. That's pretty much the way this thing works. Uh, the whole setup will be shown uh, later on when I get it all rigged together. I'll put it. I'll put that and all the rest of my uh, mechanical and electrical stuff together and show the whole tank setup.